as always, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save our file. So I'm going to go ahead and call this a muzzle break. And that being said, we can now jump in and start to create our sketch. We don't need to create a component here. We're just making one part inside of one file. I am a big fan of rectangles if you guys haven't figured that out yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start kind of inside first and work my way outside. So as you can see, this is actually going to be my through hole. Then I'm going to create where I'm going to thread on and adapt. I'm going to go ahead and make another segment here. This segment here is going to basically be my outer spun profile. And then from that, we're going to go ahead and add a couple more features. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a flat above where we thread on. And then I'm going to shoot that down to be the very outermost part of my actual profile. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. A lot of you are wondering why I'm not dimensioning this yet is because I would like to do a lot with this long before we actually start to dimension it. So a few of those things are is let's just see what our profile looks like and see if I'm even happy with where or how this is going. So as you can see here, we do have, again, a nice shoulder where we're gonna thread onto. We have a little bit of a taper here. From there, we actually just have a pretty simple hole down the center. So one of the things I'm gonna do is let's open up this end a little bit here and get that much easier. And then let's also add our flats on. Now keep in mind with us looking at this from a side profile, as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and edit my sketch. We could actually add our flats in here as well as notching out that front all in one shot. So again, big fan of rectangles, guys. We're going to go ahead and throw another rectangle in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to use a line now. And that line is going to be where we're going to create that flat. Again, we're going to say finish sketch. I'm going to go down here to the bottom where we did our revolve. I'm going to hold control, unselect that very first boundary. As you can see now, we have that nice, lovely recess in the front giving us a little different shape and look. Let's go ahead and go up to the top and do our extrude. Again, I'm gonna grab those profiles. If you can't see your sketch here, guys, you'll have to turn it on over here on the left. But we're gonna go and grab that profile at the top. I'm gonna drag that out. And we're actually gonna say this is symmetrical. And what that allows us to do is cut that flat all the way across, even though we are dealing with a sketch on center. So let's get that sketch out of the way and take a quick glance. I'm actually starting to get pretty happy with this design so far. So I think what I am going to do is before we do anything too crazy, I wouldn't mind actually putting a little bit of a fillet transition here. And I'm going to do that by actually moving my timeline back to get back to when we created that revolve. And the reason for this is, is this is going to make my life much easier in a design stage later. So I'm actually just going to put a nice one inch on there. So. Now that I've added that, we can move our timeline back forward. Our flat comes through, as you can see, there's no issues there. But let's start to actually constrain out our sketch and give it true dimensions. So again, as I'm gonna go back to my sketch, I'm gonna start to dimension this out. The first one I'm gonna start with is this guy here, as we know this is gonna be 223. As you may know, you want some clearance around something of that nature, as well as I'm actually gonna change that to 223 divided by two. And now if we go back in, this is kind of a smart way to work is Fusion is going to automatically give you a lot of what you need or spit out the dimensions you need. So what I actually need to do is I'm gonna add another 30 to this and I'm gonna throw this into brackets here. And the reason why is, is kind of like Excel does is it works left to right. So we're gonna go ahead and close that in. And now you can see that nudged me out just a hair. I do know off the top of my head, I want this to be 0.625 divided by two. I now know I also want my outermost diameter in the case of this to be 0.7, oh, let's go 1.25 divided by two. Now you're gonna notice my sketch gets a little broken here and it's not a big deal because we're not fully constrained yet. So I can actually drag things in and out and place them where I want until we fully constrain them. So again, as, as you're gonna notice, it's gonna be a little funky at first, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace these roughly where I want them. And now let's go ahead and give this an overall length. I'm gonna go 2.5, bring that rectangle in. I do want this rectangle to be a 0.125 for an eighth inch. I want the outside total diameter to be, let's see here, let's go, 
six two five divide by two and then again how deep i want to thread in i'm just going to go a half inch don't take these uh dimensions to heart guys they're not going to be exact to what you need that's going to be something you're going to have to research on your own of course but we're going to go ahead and reuse kind of the same dimensions the idea here is is to get you guys a good idea of how to do this on your own so again, because we've constrained everything except an angle or a distance here on the end, I'm still able to freely move certain things. So again, let's go in and we're gonna go point to point here. I'm gonna set this to an eighth inch also. And then I'm gonna drag this line back down into everything and anything we have going on. And I'm just kidding on that because as you're seeing, it's kind of being a pain to drag that down. However, if I switch where I grab that point, it does make it much easier. So just because the first way you tried to do something fails doesn't mean it's not doable. It's sometimes easier to approach it a couple of different ways versus deleting that and having to go back and restart. So I'm actually gonna make that flat one inch from side to side, and we're gonna mirror that across and you guys will see that here in a minute. But as you can see, when I finish my sketch, everything still worked perfectly fine as it carried through. It's a little more real world size now. I'm liking this a lot better. So let's mirror our actual flats across our part. So I'm going to go in and we're going to say now create mirror. And I actually am going to mirror a feature. And what I'm going to mirror is that extrude feature based on my center plane. So if you guys have ever noticed, you're really zoomed in here. You can't grab that plane. If you zoom out just a hair, it will scale with your work environment, making it much easier to grab. So like that we now have our upper and lower area i do like this this is coming together quite good however as some of you may guess is because we've been doing everything from a side view here i could actually add in my ports if i wanted however i'm not going to because this sketch would get pretty cloudy if i came in here with a bunch of rectangles based on center and started to sketch this in here I'm gonna have to worry about how we've designed and how we revolve things for causing problems. So what I'm actually gonna do is I am gonna create a brand new sketch and I'm gonna do that on that plane from a side view. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create these rectangles. Also keep in mind in that original sketch, we didn't know where that fillet was. So it will be tricky for us to retain that information and set things. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and create a construction line down center point of that construction line is so that when we come back with rectangles on center it's much easier for me to drag those out and i'm going to back that up because i want to turn off construction before doing a rectangle on center man i'm just not having a good mouse click day here all right there we go rectangle on center we're going to go ahead and add one two can we squeeze three in here i think we could we could also pattern these guys if you're going to go that approach as well I'm gonna just do a couple of simple constraints. However, I'm not super concerned with the dimensions here again, because the idea is, is I would like to get these more functionally put where I want them from an aesthetic standpoint, long before I'm gonna actually place them and cut them. So let's go again with minimal constraints here. I'm gonna extrude these out now. These are gonna be symmetrical once again. So let's go symmetrical to both sides and let's hit okay. So I do like that. That is actually shaping up quite well to what we want. Again, at any time, if you guys like what you're doing, you could always go back now. We could start to add our dimensions. One dimension that will be tricky, as you can see on this end, I can't actually grab anything. And the reason for that is, is because I would want to project. And what I'm gonna project is the end of my muzzle brake. Now that I've projected that, I could go through and add any and every dimension in. So let's say this is 1875. And then gap between here and here. Let's just say that's 1 eighth. And then here to here again. That's going to be the same. So I'm actually just going to go over and click that dimension. And then lastly, I do want a total height to these. And again, I'm going to work with some pretty easy numbers here. We're going to go 5 divided by 8 creating those pockets. So as you may notice is this isn't fully constrained yet because we do still have a little bit of a gap between these two. But if I go through and I say, you know what, I like the idea of these two pockets being equal. And I like the idea of those pockets maybe being three eighths of an inch. I can go through and adjust that. So hold on here why I said 0.3, not three divided by eight. 
And then again, we're still not fully constrained because we didn't give that first pocket a dimension. So let's see what we can come up with down there. So again, we can adjust this to whatever we feel necessary. Again, this could be, let's go 0.5 here. And it looks like we do have enough room to clear everything that we have going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and say finish. And now just like that, we have all of our ports. We didn't like that fillet guys. Keep that in mind that we can always go back to our fillet tool when we created that radius, right? Oh, that is our revolve tool, not the actual fillet. And if I wanted to change this now down to say a 0.5 radius, now we've created more room. Again, this is the fun of being able to design a part and see it long before you touch it so that you can make these changes off of anything and everything without having to do extra work. So from here, I'm gonna go in and let's just go ahead and clean up these pockets. We're gonna go and throw our fillets on each side. Again, we want to clean up these corners. Had I patterned one of these pockets and made all three of them symmetrical, I would have been able to fill it and then pattern prior to. But let's go in and let's see what a eighth inch looks like here. Actually, eighth inch looks very good for what we're doing. So as you can see, we've now created those baffles as cross, cross baffles, cross pockets, whatever you guys want to call them. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit more flair. Let's go ahead and throw a couple of holes up top that are actually coming down from the top. So we're gonna go ahead and sketch on this face. Again, I'm a big fan of construction lines to help you keep things on center. In this case, I failed to turn on construction lines, so I'm just picking that actual line and hitting X. And now we could go through and we could throw our holes on here. So one, two, and three. And keeping with the theme, let's go ahead and make two of these the same. And then what I'm going to do now, and this is where everything gets a lot more fun, is I would like to get possibly these holes as close to center on these pockets as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna hit P for project. And just from this view, it's much easier for me to project the entire face and boundary so that I can go back with, as you may guess, some lovely construction lines. So we're gonna go ahead and go kitty corner here on each one of these, now giving me a point of intersect for me to place these actual through holes on. So again, we're gonna dimension this now, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my D for dimension. Let's make this, you know, three eighths. We're gonna make these next two quarter inch, 0.25. And now to confirm that they're fully constrained, if I try to click and drag them, you can see they don't go anywhere. So now we can extrude them. So again, given that those projected edges, and so that you guys know I hit E there for extrude, is they are breaking those boundaries, which isn't a big, big deal, but it does make it sometimes a little difficult to you know pick three boundaries versus one. So just keep that in mind. So as you can see, I'm only gonna drag those down from the top. I don't want them all the way through to the bottom. But again, we've just added another feature to this muzzle brake that's cleaning up that design even more. So lastly is always, we wanna go in and start breaking edges and clean this up as much as possible. So I'm gonna go to my chamfer tool in the modeling workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the different edges and what I want. So let's say, what does 50 look like here? While we maybe do 025 around here. I am liking that shape and look so far. So again, I'm gonna go back to that because I did enter out by accident. But what happens if I actually go back to that first edge and let's throw that same size across the top here. That might be a little overkill. So I'm gonna go ahead and unselect that. I did like that on the first one. But now the second two, what happens if I go 025 on those ones? Again, giving it a little bit different look. I'm liking that a lot. Again, I'm gonna keep with that 025 chamfer to edge. I'm gonna throw that around these actual ports that run across. And I'm actually liking that a lot. Last place I'm gonna do that is, let's go ahead and throw that right there in that tip. And just like that, by just breaking the edges, we've given this such a dramatically different look. So if you guys like this kind of content, we are gonna do part two where we're gonna actually put this on a mill turn machine and turn it. But in order to get the update on when we do that, don't forget to hit like, follow, and subscribe and leave a comment down below with suggestions that you guys wanna see.